Hey, hey everyone, welcome back to the Spark Faith Podcast. I am Dr. Chris Sargent, and today, what is the beef with beef? Beef has been vilified for so long, and I'm just here to kind of clear it all up a little bit and try to keep it a little bit easier um, for y'all, like I did with oatmeal in my last one that you actually really liked. I'm so excited about that. So anyway, so yes, beef has gotten a bad rap for a very long time. And although the sirloin and the round cuts that are super lean only have a slightly higher amount of saturated fat than chicken, beef has just been vilified. And so it's been associated with type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and heart disease. So let's walk through those four things right today. And and clear out some of the cobwebs, if you will. So let's just start with heart disease. So recently, a review of 72 different studies, 72 studies, found no link between beef and heart disease. So I think that that just needs to be taken off the table. There's not a direct correlate between eating beef and having heart disease, right? There may be other things that you eat with the beef that causes the heart disease, but it's probably not the beef itself, right? Or maybe it's the amount of beef, but beef in and of itself is not necessarily an issue for heart disease. Okay, so what about type two diabetes? So in type two diabetes, we have too much blood sugar causes too much insulin, and then your body doesn't recognize the insulin anymore and your blood sugar goes up, right? So it's insulin resistance or pre-diabetes or metabolic syndrome, type two diabetes. All of those are around kind of this whole too much insulin thing because of too many carbohydrates. So there's not really a good physiological mechanism that would take beef and cause it to raise your blood sugar in kind of a direct in normal amounts, right? Small, normal amounts, normal portion sizes, right? Is not going to increase your blood sugar. In fact, actually beef with its little bit of fat can actually help stabilize your blood sugar when eaten with complex carbohydrates like a potato, sweet potato, um, or maybe even a small amount of pasta, right? It can actually keep your blood sugar more even, reducing the amount of insulin that you need, reducing, therefore, less insulin resistance and less type 2 diabetes. So let's take that off the table. And again, I think what happens in some of these studies is they look at people who eat beef and go ground beef, and then that's a bun and fries that go along with it. Now there's type 2 diabetes on a plate. Right. So that's the therein lies the the rub sometimes with some of these things. And the same thing goes for high cholesterol. Our body makes 75 percent of its own cholesterol. So what we eat in our diet, our body can adjust to that. It's intelligent enough to understand that. So where does the high cholesterol come from? It comes from different stressors in ourself. It comes from actually mental and emotional stress. It comes from eating stress, like eating a lot of high processed food kind of stress or too many carbohydrates kind of stress. Those are stressors, not enough exercise stress, right? Um, and where you're at, women, um, where you're at on that perimenopause, menopause state, can being in menopause can raise your cholesterol. Having a low thyroid or hypothyroid can raise your cholesterol. So just understand that there's an awful lot more factors than whether you eat beef that will raise your cholesterol and our body makes its own cholesterol. High blood pressure, right? Another thing, also controlled by our central nervous system and impacted a lot by the different stressors that we put in our body. Like too much alcohol, too much caffeine, too much mental and emotional stress, not enough water. Dehydration can certainly cause um, some issues with your blood pressure, along with a lack of magnesium, which is actually very critical in that 
dilation and um, contraction of your blood vessels. So there's a lot more factors to blood pressure also than whether you eat beef or not. So I just want to, um, and also the genetic side of all this is um, to all of those things, only about a 10 to 30% influence. Let me say that again. Over all of these things, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, there's only about a 10 to 30% um, uh, push from your genetics into those into those issues. It's it's really about how our genetics interact with what we do to them, right? It's it's not a direct connection between genetics and and heart disease, cholesterol, blood pressure, right? It's not completely direct like that. So saying all of that. How about eating some beef tonight for dinner? Just choose the lean cuts, right? And not maybe not every single night. Let's choose leaner cuts. We could choose bison that's even leaner than regular beef and better for you, has a better composition of healthier fats. Um, there's, you can eat lamb, same thing, right? It's it's cleaner, it's raised differently. It's a, it's a cleaner meat and again, has a better fat profile than just our, our cow. So and and how you eat beef is up to you and your budget. You know, I'm not going to, we're not going to play that game. Um, yes, we can definitely eat cleaner and yes, that's going to be better for you. But overall is in the big picture and the big scheme of thing. What's the beef with beef? There shouldn't be one. Thanks y'all. Blessings. Talk to you soon. Bye.